Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to the Dice Tower. Today we're going to talk about some advent calendars. Yes, it's Christmas in February. But uh, I want to talk about a couple of these. The first one, I can't even really show you. I will pop a picture on the screen, but it's called Exit the Game Advent Calendar Silent Storm. Now, if you look through the Dice Tower channel, you can find our review of the last Exit the Game Advent Calendar, which I loved quite a bit. Uh, but uh, these get destroyed as you play them. The, you, it's a big box. You're going to open a door on the first. It tells you which door to open. You open that door. It gives you a puzzle. And then by solving that puzzle, it uses some clues to point you to what the next door is to open. And there's other surprises that are involved there. As I said, I don't have the box anymore. So you're going to go through each day until you get to the final puzzle, which is Christmas time. And I loved the first one. We're talking about this, this, this one now, which I believe is the third one out of four. I've not played all of them. This is only the second one that me and the kids played. And we played it pretty much on course, playing one a day in the Christmas season. But there were occasional times where we played two or three a day just because some days were busy and we didn't get around to doing it. Um, but we had a lot of fun going through this. And I'm going to tell you right now, I enjoyed it a lot. Still give it an 8.5. There were a few things that I thought made it not perfect. One was, I thought the story was stupid. I can't really get into it too much because I don't want to spoil it. There's a lot of story in this game. Like, you get a little book full of story and there's tons of it. And after a while, I was like, are you kidding? And the payoff was just like, really? That's what this is? Uh, the, the, the last one we played, The Golden Book, was a much more interesting story. This one was... Very yawn-inducing, uh, to the point where sometimes I would even skip over reading it. I was like, eh, who cares? Then the final, final puzzle, I mean, the final puzzle of the Golden Book, we were like, what? This one was less, and it's like the second or third puzzle to the end was pretty hard. I don't think I would have got it without the final clues. There's a clue system, in case you get stuck. And for the most part, we didn't need most of the clues, um, but... Despite that, the fun of opening a puzzle every day, and some of these puzzles are really clever and really fun. And they use the box to some neat degree, you know, you when you open it, it's a room usually, so you're like peering into the room. We're using our phone flashlights and peering in there to find out stuff. It gives you items and cards. Sometimes there's a call back to previous puzzles. We learned our lesson with the Golden Book. Never get rid of anything. So we put everything back in the room and close it. Uh, just in case we need that stuff later, and just be warned, you should you should do that with all of these. But overall, I thought it was a lot of fun. The next one that I'm going to show you here is from a company called Ludum Effigium, and I don't want to show you too much of this one, but it's not too much of a spoiler. So I have two of these. Uh, this one is a submarine, and this one is a tree. Now what they, they learned, this is one of the earlier ones I did, this is a newer one, the submarine they made it so it could be folded, which is great because it's easier to store that way. But what this has is it has a bunch of numbers here at the top, and then it has a bunch of, 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 of pictures here, and these pictures have things that you can open and look at. And so if you open a number at the top, it will give you a clue, a pictorial clue, um, sometimes a, a written clue, but when you do that, then you need to find the picture here that matches that. And when you do that, you'll open it, and then that picture will show you a number. And then that number will, if that number matches when you open, great. Now, obviously, if you open the wrong number, I don't know that you can forget it until uh, you get to that number later on. But it's not too bad. And also, there are some rooms in here that say nothing. They're just like silly, like, ah, that's the wrong room to open. And what's really fun about these is this is basically like a Where's Waldo picture. And as you open the room, the scene changes. And that's a lot of fun. It's really silly. And in each of these, there's just a bunch of gnomes running all over doing nonsensical things. And it's really fun to find that. Some clues are really obvious. There's the thing. Some of them were tricky. They show you a before or after picture of an event. Some you have to follow something through here. Um, this one was easier than the submarine, but I think overall the submarine one was more fun. Although we got a few wrong in the submarine, but uh, this one I don't think we got anything wrong because this one was just a lot easier. But for kids, young kids, these are great. 
They're not particularly expensive. So that's Ludum, L-U-D-U-M, Effugium, E-F-F-U-G-I-U-M. We'll put that, we'll put uh, the name here on the screen so you can see that. But uh, yeah, I was really impressed with these. They're easy to carry. It's an easy gift to send someone to play. So I really enjoy these. I'll give these also an 8.5 out of 10. So there you go, a little bit of Christmas for you or some planning for next year's Christmas. Some Advent calendars. I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.